Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and let's say you flip a coin four times and all four of them land heads. What are the odds, right? But then, your stat teacher walks up to you and says, actually, the odds that you got that are the same as the odds you get anything else. And you look at her and you're going, no, it's not. Okay, well, both of you are actually correct, you and your stat teacher. It's a little confusing, but pretty cool, so let me show you. When you flip a coin four times, these are the 16 possible combinations of heads and tails that you can get. So there's only one outcome where you get all four heads, which means that you have a 1 in 16 chance of getting four heads. If we look at three heads and one tail, there are four possible combinations, meaning there's a 4 out of 16 chance. There are six outcomes with two heads, so 6 out of 16, 4 with one head, and 1 with no heads. So as you can see, the odds of getting all heads are not the same as the odds of getting most other options. This is why you're right. But until this point, we've only been looking at the total amount of heads and tails in each combination. We haven't been looking at the order of heads and tails that actually constructs the combination. For example, even though these two combinations have the same total number of heads and tails, two each, they're clearly different because they have a different order, a different sequence. This is what your teacher means when she says that you have the same odds of getting all heads as anything else. Every single combination here is equally likely when we look at them in terms of sequence of heads and tails instead of total amount of heads and tails. Basically, the person who's correct is determined by the metric that we're using to uh, assess the statistics. Are we looking at total amount, or are we looking at sequence? And for one last fun statistical concept, looking at total amount and sequence aren't the only two interpretations that will give us different answers. We can also look at how we achieve our results, whether we do this process all at once or in sequence. Now, up until this point, we've been flipping one coin four times, sequentially, right? But let's instead flip four coins all at once and try to get at least one head. The probability of this, like before, is still 15 out of 16, but when we flip four coins at once, the probability will always be 15 out of 16. If we go back to doing it sequentially, one coin flip at a time, this could change. Yeah, the probability at the start is still 15 out of 16 because there's only one sequence that doesn't work, but once you get your first tails, everything changes. Your odds of getting at least heads after one tails are no longer 15 out of 16 because we have to eliminate the half of our options that started with heads, the options that are now impossible to achieve. For our next coin flip, we now have eight possible outcomes, seven of which have at least one head. Now, if we get another tail, we do the same thing as before, eliminate all the options that started with a head. Now, our odds of getting at least one head are even lower at three out of four. If this second to last flip is also tails, then after eliminating the options that started with heads, our last flip is literally just the flip of a coin, heads and tails. Even though we had a 15 out of 16 chance to get at least one head in four flips, each unsuccessful tails flip actually reduces our chances by eliminating some of our original options. And like I said earlier, this just doesn't happen when you flip four coins at once because there's no sequential elimination of options. You just flip and get your results in one step. So when you look at statistics, and specifically probabilistic outcomes, you can look at these from a lot of different angles. You can interpret results based on total amount or sequence, and you can look at the method by which you achieve those results as something that happens all at once or sequentially. There are a bunch of other ways too, but for now, that's it. Um, I'm sure I'll make other videos on statistic stuff in the future, because I clearly enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> thanks, and I'll see you later. Hey, if you do want to see another video similar to this, I made one a while back called The Law of Small Numbers. Some of you have probably already seen it, but some of you probably haven't, so it'll be up here somewhere for you to click on. Uh, that video is where I first talked about. The order is different from, sequ uh, uh, amount is different from sequence thing, but it was more fleshed out in this video. So there you go. Thanks, and I'll see you later.